sorry about the change of background. I'm using natural light, so I kind of got to follow the sun where it goes. And it's later in the day, so I'm in my parents' room right now. That's me back there. I can't point. I'm a cartoon somewhere. Real cute. Hello. So, today I'm doing a basic ass tag. Sorry about the lighting. It's gonna change a lot. <laughs> I'm going to be basic today and do a 12 things about me because people need to know what I like or about me to follow and subscribe. We're just gonna jump right in, okay? Number one, I am obsessed with school supply stuff. My first love was writing. And so with that comes with the obsession of journals, colorful pens or pens that write nicely. Like right now, I have like one of those pens that like change colors because I, I wanted one, I needed one, and I saw it and I just bought it. But I'm like, I'm obsessed with post-its. Like, <laughs> post-its are my thing. I love them so much. I have an endless amount of journals and pens and different colored pens and post-its and different colored post-its and I have a lot of just, I have planners. I get really excited about school because that means I get a new planner. Number two, polar bears are my favorite animal in the world, or the number one favorite animal of mine. I have, have several, but polar bears are my favorite. I remember back in elementary school, you know how like they'd ask you, hey, what's your favorite animal? Write it in, whatever. I'd always say polar bear, and people would always look at me like, polar bear? Like, I couldn't just be normal and say, like, a lion or something. Number three. A lot of people know this. If you know me, you know this. I am a coffee addict. I need coffee at least once every day, but I love coffee so much, I'll have it more than once a day. It's very unhealthy. Uh, <laughs> I have to go to Starbucks every day. Every day. And I know a lot of people are like, Starbucks isn't even that good. Blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know. I know there's better things out there than Starbucks. I know there's coffee bean. I know there's little mom and pop places. I know there's other stuff that's less mainstream that's just as good, if not better. I know that. I just prefer to go to Starbucks. Number four, I love trees. <laughs> no, not those trees. Like, trees, you know? <laughs> My mom tells me this story all the time. I was in kindergarten, maybe younger, maybe not kindergarten, but I was young and they were trimming a tree on my street and we had a big ass window. Little Valerie pushed up against the window, like screaming at the guy. <laughs> I was screaming at the guy trimming the tree, telling him, I was crying, I was screaming. I was really passionate about that tree. I was telling him not to kill the tree. I was, I was very upset that day because I didn't want him to kill the tree. <laughs> Today, that's still kind of true. It's less um, outrageous. I have an emotional attachment to the tree outside my house because we moved into this house as the first 
owners of this house. Like it was built for us, you know what I mean? It was one of those new houses way back when. We've been here for over 10 years now. So when I found out that my parents were trying to move, I low-key got emotional because our family and our house, well no, houses don't grow, but our family has grown up with the tree. You know how like when they make new houses and then they plant newer trees so they're all like skinny and there's a big if on how they grow. They might be big, they might fall over, like you can never determine. Our tree is definitely one of the best ones on our block and I'm so proud of that tree. And so when I thought that we were gonna be moving, I was emotional about leaving that tree behind. <laughs> I just like trees. Number five. I used to be obsessed with tea parties. When I was younger, you know, baby Valerie, I had a lot of tea sets. Apparently, I would always ask my uncles to play tea party with me every time. I'm like, sorry uncles. And you know, with age, that kind of, clearly that went away, but like not entirely. Till this day, if I go into a toy store and I see a really nice tea set, <laughs> I get really excited. And I'm just like, I want it. <laughs> Number six, I love, love Mayday Parade. It's a band, not a lot of people know them, I guess. If you know them, be my friend. If you don't, be my friend so I can convert you. <laughs> I love them so much. I've seen them live several times now. I have a drumstick of theirs. I just, I just love them so much. They just got me through a lot of hard times, you know? And that's what a band is supposed to do for you. And they did that for me, along with many other bands, but they, they're they definitely my favorite. Number seven, I have an obsession with true crime. Would you call it that? I'm obsessed with serial killers. Let me explain, let me explain, let me explain. Okay. How do you explain this without sounding crazy? I just love hearing about serial killers. You know how on Oxygen, the, the, the television channel, they have like true, that new true crime series? I love it. On Reels channel, you know how like they talk about serial killers and like what they did and how they were caught or not caught or whatever. I love that. You know the Lacey Peterson case? You know how like they're they're having like a like a special on that? I'm watching that right now. And I'm so entertained by it. I'm so interested in it. I can sit there for hours watching that stuff. I'm obsessed with documentaries about like killer kids and all these crime things. It's just, I love it. And I get that from my mom because my mom, she has all these books. She has this book about Helter Skelter, you know, the, the Charles Manson murder. She has the Menendez brothers. She has John Bonet. like I got it from my mom. I just love all that true crime stuff and you know, I'm not, I'm not trying, trying to be a psycho. I just, it's just so interesting, you know. Number eight. My mom, me, and my sister, the book readers of family. We have this rule where if it was a book first, we will not watch the movie until we read the book. We hate, no, hate's a strong word. <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> We strongly dislike the people that go into movie theaters for a movie that um, was originally a book. Like a well-known book. Like if you go 
and watch like it. If you haven't read that book, I mean, I'm not gonna judge you. It's, I think it's a long ass book anyway, you know? Like who, who has time to read that? It's a, it's a scary movie anyway. You don't really need to know like the significance. You know what I mean? So I guess it depends, it depends. We are not big fans of those people that go watch a movie before reading the book because then they develop these opinions that most of the time are kind of false because if they had read the book, they would know why certain things were the way they were or some of the holes would have been filled or like, you know what I mean? If you do that, we won't judge you much. Number nine. I used to have a butt chin. I'm serious, it was like right here. Right there. <laughs> Number 10. This is similar to like the tea party thing. I used to be obsessed with Barbies and people that know me now would have never guessed that because I'm not into the whole... I'm not... I'm not girly in a sense where you know I'm all about pink stuff or Barbie-ish stuff. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I'm a I'm a sneakers kind of person. I don't know how to describe this. Basically, I used to love my Barbies. I even till this day I love them so much. I haven't given any of them away. I love them. And when I go to Frankincense, if you guys have never been to Frankincense, one, go. What are you doing with your life? Two, they have good food. So, I mean, go. It's all vendors that sell different things, you know. Some of them have are purely for like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Some of them are purely for posters. Some of them are purely comic books. And then others are like figurines or anime, you know what I mean? And so there's some booths that have Barbie, collectible Barbies. And I always wanted to be a collector of Barbies ever since I was young. But I mean, my mom made an educated decision to not go about that because one, collector's Barbies are expensive. Like my mom wasn't passionate about Barbies. I was. And was I gonna give her the money? Was six-year-old Valerie gonna give my mom the money for collectible Barbies? No. I didn't grow money out of my ass. We never did. We never collected Barbies, but every time I see them, I'm, I could stand there for at least an hour looking at all the collectible Barbies just like admiring how beautiful they are and how well kept they are like I love Barbies but not like that you know I don't know number 11 I collect speaking of collecting the Harley Quinn pop figures these guys. I've made it a goal of mine to collect all the Harley Quinns ever created of these guys, you know? I've loved Harley Quinn even before Suicide Squad, before the hype, before the bandwagon was created. I liked her before that, okay? Let's get that straight. They came out with her first pop figure and it was it was the green one or you know not it was the green box it was green and uh, I can't think of the number right now I want to say it was number 45 number 45 in the first series of these guys and you know I got it and then after that I saw that there there was one with a mallet and then there was one with her looking angry with the mallet and then I just somehow made it a goal to collect all of them and I told my best friend about this and he has helped me tremendously in getting a lot of them. <laughs> As of right now, I don't know, I honestly don't know how many I have right now 
because we were planning on moving so a lot of my stuff is packed in boxes in the garage and that includes majority of my pop figures. I have a picture saved somewhere. I'll try to insert it somewhere maybe if that works. That picture is now currently inaccurate because I've gotten a bunch more. You know, as long as I keep making Harley Quinns, I'm gonna keep buying them and collecting them. 12 is my favorite number. It was the, it was the consistent number that I've had on my jerseys for the most part. I didn't dis I didn't figure out that it was my favorite number till maybe senior year of high school. And that was because I was looking through some of my old sports pictures and I was looking at my t-ball picture when I was, you know, little. And I saw that my number was 12. And at that time that I saw that picture, my current jersey number was 12. I was just like, And after that, I tried, or I didn't try, but I realized that I've always been in like that 11, 12 range of like jersey numbers or attendance forms. So naturally, I was like, you know what? 12's a, 12's a good number. I like that number. It's, it's significant, I guess. It's like my birth month, you know? I don't know, I really like it, so. I've liked it ever since. And that's it. That was 12 things about me. I didn't want to do too much. You'll learn more about me anyway. I'm not gonna lay it all out, you know? Like, where's the mystery? Thank you for watching again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And don't forget to like and subscribe, comment at the bottom, tell me if you think I'm crazy, if you want me to elaborate on things, if you want to say that you like some of these things too. Tell me if you know who Mayday Parade is because be my friend. I will see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye. Here's in for T-Ball. burp every time. Number 11. That's ugly. My family like... <laughs> what is that line coming from? I think it's that. We're still rolling. Stop that. I just got so, so passionate about serial killers right now. I lost my train of thought. What number was I on? <gasps> the OJ Simpson case? Like that shit too. He did it. I'm just saying. So hold on for a while.